All right, good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining tonight. We'll go ahead and get started. My name is Cindy Cordova, and I am a Senior Assistant Director within the Board of Admissions at Boston College. And on behalf of everyone here, we want to welcome you to the BC community and congratulate you on your recent admission to BC. I know that some of you have already deposited and you're so excited to join the BC family and others might still be making up their minds. And for that, we wanna be here to answer all of your questions and know that everyone on my team within the admissions office, as well as everyone within financial aid is available and ready to answer your questions at any point. For tonight's conversation, I'm just so happy to be joined by five great leaders from our campus community. And we're going to be talking about the resources available to you if you identify as the first in your family to go to college, or maybe someone who is coming from a financially challenged or low income background. Now this conversation is recorded, so you can reference it at any point. And we did receive your questions ahead of time. So we've had the opportunity to incorporate some of those questions into tonight's conversation. It is the beginning of the dialogue after all. So please allow yourself to continue to ask these questions along the way. If questions come up tonight that you want answers to, you can submit those questions through the Q&A option that is available at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So you can see that Q&A icon and you can click on there and type in your questions. And we'll try to get to as many questions as we have uh, within the next 45 minutes or so. So without further ado, I'm gonna let our speakers introduce themselves. And let's start with Akua Sar. Good evening, everyone. My name is Akua Sar, and I am Vice Provost for Undergraduate Academic Affairs at Boston College. And I have been at BC for almost 15 years, about 14 and a half years. I think December will be um, the beginning of my 15th year. And I'm really happy and excited to welcome you to this webinar and looking forward to hearing some of your questions and welcoming you all to Boston College. Thank you, Akua. Andy? Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm really excited to be here and to also welcome you all potentially to Boston College. Uh, again, my name is Andy Patigny. I am the Associate Director at the Thea Bowman Ahana and Intercultural Center or BAIC for short. Um, and I've been at Boston College spanning two different offices. So for me, this fall will make it 16 years. So just a little bit longer than Akua, uh, but welcome. We're so happy to have you. Rafael? How are you doing, um, everyone? And um, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm really excited to be on this panel. And uh, my name is Rafael Luna. I'm uh, an associate dean in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. I'm also the director of the, of the pre-health program and the director of the Gateway Scholars Program uh, in STEM. And in November will be my fourth year. So I have a way to, to catch up, but I learned so much from Andy and Akua. It's such a great team. So, um, and I hope to be here for much longer too. Thank you for joining us. Rosanna? Hello, good evening, and congratulations on your acceptance to BC. My name is Rosana Contreras Godfrey, and I'm the director of the Learning to Learn program. I've been at BC for over, I think, over 20 years, really. I did a couple of coming, going and coming back, but I'm happy to be here, and it's, I'm on my 16th year, um, on my second stint at BC. So happy to have you as well. Yvonne. Good afternoon, good evening, actually, everyone. First, let me congratulate you for spending some time with us this evening, some quality time, because Netflix, I'm telling you, the, the fact that you're with us, we're gonna make sure that you enjoy this show tonight. And my name is Yvonne McBarnett. I have been at Boston College for 17 years, and I am happy to be a part of this conversation with you this evening, not only you, but you and your family. And I hope that you learn a lot from us tonight because we have a lot to offer. So sit back, relax, and take it all in. Take care. I'll be with you shortly. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And as you can see, all good vibes here in this panel. I'm so excited that, that you're all joining us. Now, I guess to get started, we learned a little bit about your roles at BC, but let's talk a little bit more about the services that your offices provide. I was a first generation low income student myself. And I think one of the biggest challenges is just you don't know what you don't know. 
And sometimes you don't know who to go to for those questions and those answers. So maybe if you can each just talk a little bit more about some of the services and programming that you offer to these students so that they can be successful during their time at BC and successful in their formation years during their time at BC. Who would like to start? Okay, Nakua, go ahead. I tried to raise my hand, but I said I'd raise my real hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Um, I, I'll start. Um, well, I, I work, as I said, in undergraduate academic affairs. So I work with a number of different programs that support um, students' academic success. So, um, you know, a number of the folks that'll, that'll speak, but, um, you know, we work with student athletes. We have a, a, a program that supports our student athletes. We have programs that support our uh, AHANA students, our students of color. We have programs that support first gen students and low income students, students that are interested in health professions. Uh, we have tutoring services. We have academic advising in all of the schools and colleges. So there are a wealth of people across the campus that are here to support students um, make progress academically to be successful both inside and outside of the classroom and we really think of our education very holistically so we want to support students academic success um, their spiritual and their social um, interest as well and so we have a wealth of services that our panelists will speak about across campus to really help students um, integrate well into the campus and to, to be successful academically. Wonderful, thank you so much Akua. And that's certainly a very important conversation that we'll dive deeper into tonight. Rosanna, you can unmute yourself, Rosanna. We did practice this, didn't we? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm very proud that um, my office in particular, um, we work with first generation college students. Um, and most recently we were um, highlighted by um, being um, identified as a first gen forward institution through the NASPA Association, which is, which is a professional um, higher education association. So Boston College is now among 77 institutions that are considered first gen forward. And what that means is that not only through my office, but the partnerships that we have among the BAIC, Montserrat, um, the Gateway Program, and other services at the institution, we are able to support um, students that are identified as first gen um, to college, as well as low income students. Um, my office runs two particular programs that are federally funded under the TRIO programs. So if you have been a participant of an Upper Bound program or a Talent Search program, we are part of your TRIO family and will welcome you to our, to our services to continue that support that you have become accustomed to through your Upper Bound or Talent Search um, programming. Um, and so I'll leave it at that, but I do have um, some programs that I do wanna highlight a little later on, in particular uh, programs that help students transition into the institution, um, but I'll let others speak. Perfect, thank you. And I know you were talking a little bit about your partnership with the Montserrat Coalition Program, and we have Yvonne McBarnett here. So maybe Yvonne, if you can talk a little bit more about your services. Absolutely, and I'm sure, I, I'm I hope I did introduce myself as Monster Yvonne McBonnet, the director of the Monster Coalition Program. So, um, so our office aims to assist students at the highest level of financial need to participate and experience in the Jesuit education. Uh, we have a lot of programs in, in that we don't really have a program. And I, the program, the, the name Monster Program doesn't really have programs, but what, what, what our office does is the bridge between the university and our office to making sure that the uh, students that do attend Boston College, their needs are going to be met in regards to service trips that they want, would like to participate in. We also have a mentoring program for our sophomores. 
We also have a library for our students that you know come into uh, Boston College and may not be able to afford the first couple of books that they're expected to purchase. So we're there to you know exact uh, to assist in that regard. Uh, we also have a um, when I, in our office, which is very unique, it's in a house. So I call it the home away from home, where you can be authentic, you're going to be loved, and you feel connected to Boston College, because guess what? There are gonna be people that look like you and me. And you know, when students come to a college, and especially at a PWI, the first question is, anyone going to be there that looks like me? Well, let me answer that question for you. Yes, look at this panel tonight. I mean, they're all looking like me, and I'm so proud to be amongst them. And when you can find a place that you can call home and um, your experience is feeling, your, feel, your experience is much better. And I always tell the students when I meet the students, you're coming in with your culture, you're coming in with a lot of value. And one thing that I ask you to do is continue to be authentic, be your true self, and you will thrive at Boston College. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Raphael and then Andy. Uh, thank you. And and just to follow up with uh, what Yvonne mentioned about being your authentic self, um, you know, she says that, but, and BC really means that too, to be your authentic self. Like, um, and, you know, my role as the uh, director of the Gateway Program, you know, I work with faculty, I work with uh, ACUA, and what we do is we we work with students that come in that are, are first generation and underrepresented um, students um and so what we do is we try if they have a dream or if they have a vision of being a scientist or a physician and they want to major in biology or chemistry or biochemistry then we partner with them and we work with students to help them fulfill their dreams and so and, and like yvonne mentioned will it be students there that look like you yes in the gateway program there is and so you would find a community. And the whole focus of Gateway is to build community, not only community among the students, but that transition for student formation between faculty and students, that their deep relationships uh, between faculty and students, just so that students can grow and be their best self and who, who they want to become. And so that is done with the Gateway program. And then if you continue on, uh, and STEM Gateway covers the first two years. And if you continue on, uh, then maybe um, in a biology major, you might want to do pre-med. Then I'll be working with you too, going applying through medical school. We walk you all the way through. Um, and uh, and then and as you continue to do well, then I would love to see your name as one of the juniors, dean scholars, sophomore scholars, and um, the uh, the senior awards. And that's done through the uh, the dean's office, associate dean's office as well. So, you know, hopefully, I'll have many touch points with you if you decide to come. And we work collaboratively with all the offices here. Absolutely. Go ahead, Andy. Just trying to get all right. Um, so, in our office, so again, the Thea Bowman Ahan and Intercultural Center, the BAIC. So, uh, so our our mission is really to support all undergraduate students. Um, and so we also have a specific focus on AHANA students, OTE students, and multiracial students. We have kind of three pillars or three areas where we kind of put our programs in. So one is promoting equity, uh, supporting opportunity, and then building community. And so there are a number of different programs that kind of um, fit under that um, or those umbrellas. I'll, I'll name a few and just talk a little bit about it. So I would say the first is kind of academic and kind of college counseling. So really kind of getting you familiar to the, uh, to the resources of, at BC, uh, making sure you're in the right classes, your experience at BC, um, your home life, how your home life uh, impacts your academic life and career involvement and so on. So that's kind of academic counseling. And that's um, above and beyond who might be assigned to you as an academic counselor. And so working with kind of all Ahana students, you may have an academic advisor, but then you would still come in to us just to kind of uh, what we call, uh, call like a holistic approach, just looking at all different areas of your uh, experience at Boston College. Um, another program in terms of impacting different areas is the uh, Bowman Advocates for Inclusive Culture. So this is a leadership program in our office. These students facilitate different conversations on race and culture and ethnicity. That's a program you can get involved with um, sophomore year and up. 
Um, we have the uh, nursing outreach uh, program and um, academic study space and a lounge in the space for students to get together and to work as groups and that sort of thing. Uh, we have the Bowman Scholars Ceremony, um, uh, celebrating students with uh, GPAs and making different opportunities available to them now that they've kind of reached that level. We have a couple different service trips. So we have a, a Jamaica Magic service trip as well as the Civil Rights service trip. Uh, we do celebrate and work with students around Ethnic Heritage Months. So whether it's the opening or closing of different months, so that's another opportunity to learn about different cultures and to celebrate uh, with each other. We have the options through Education Transitional Program, or OTE, and so that's a transition program that um, works with students um, all four years, um, and not only as a participant, but then we also work with students to uh, serve as leaders in the OTE program. So if you're interested in that, that's another area. Then we do different things socially, so whether it's events in our office, so we have a Taste of BAIC where we'll feature different um, cuisines once a month and in invite different folks. We have the uh, Hanitz Tailgates, so on different um, Saturday football games, we'll work with different culture clubs and student groups to, to host different tailgates before the football games. Um, and then lastly, the last two I'll kind of uh, mention is the community research program, uh, where students can, who are interested in a particular research topic can work with different communities and ultimately present. So it's a great way to, I think, inform maybe things that you've thought of, questions that you've had and kind of find out the reason why uh, these things happen. And last is our Mays Mentoring Program, uh, where we uh, match students with faculty and staff at BC for all four years, and they can help different questions, uh, answer different questions and help guide you as well. So I would say overall, our motto kind of philosophy would be to have a network of advisors and just uh, being able to kind of help you along your journey. Thank you so much. I know, Rosanna, you wanted to add on to that. Yes, thank you. Um, under Learning to Learn, I wanted to highlight some of the programs that we have. Um, I know that we've sent out invitations in particular to first generation students around a program that we um, have that is called the BC First uh, College Transition Program. Uh, normally it would be a two week residential program, but unfortunately due to the COVID-19, we're all going online and at um, and in person, hopefully, when we uh, go back to campus in August. So um, I wanted to highlight as, as an opportunity for those students that um, are classified as first gen and want to build a community and learn more about Boston College in a more intimate way. Um, and so I invite you to apply. The application is actually on the student portal in the, in the admissions website. Um, we also offer, we're offering this year that is a new initiative that we have is a living and learning floor um, for first year students. So I would also um, invite you to apply through the Rest Life application. Um, and again, our goal is to support your transition from high school to college and to see you be successful and particularly in the academic arena. And one of the um, key other key programs that we have is the course that is called Applications of the Learning Theory. It's a three credit elective course. And the students go through a myriad of study strategies and skills that will help them in forming the new um, techniques that they will have to apply and the new uh, skills that they will need to acquire in order to be successful in the post-secondary uh, arena because um, studying in high school and college is very different than studying in high school. So um, we help students develop some key um, skills so that they can be um, successful and they can perform at the highest level um, once they're at BC. Thank you all for sharing about all of the resources available. And as Rosanna said, a lot of this information is available on the individual websites for, for um, all of your programs and services. And this won't be the first time that you will hear about this, these resources, but we really wanted for you to be exposed, have you know, th this, this opportunity to learn a little bit more about these resources before you even start taking classes with, with BC, start interacting with some of the mentors on campus, um, really just trying to look out for you and make sure that you are aware of these resources. And just picking up on the themes of support and attending a predominantly white institution, a private 
predominantly white institution like BC, um, and thinking about you know many ways how we want to celebrate diversity, whether it is social economic diversity, um, you being the first in your family to go to college, and diversity in every sense of the word. What are some of the challenges that you think, and from your conversations with our current BC students, what are some of the challenges that come up sometimes? Because you know they will come up. It's normal. It, it, it's it's part of life. But what are some of the challenges that come up when it comes to belonging, and how are you proactively trying to address that? Uh, maybe through programming, maybe through conversations with students. Just a couple of examples. Aku, I see your hand, your virtual hand up. So I'm gonna let you take the floor. Um, I I just wanna. If you can unmute yourself. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Rosanna had mentioned, um, you know, from the transition from is um, often difficult for all students, but it's it can be particularly um, difficult for um, first gen students and and students of color coming to a predominantly white um, campus. Um, where um, the campus may not be as diverse as their um, high schools or, or their hometowns or neighborhoods. And so sometimes I think students can sometimes feel quite alone um, when, when they first arrive on campus. And I think one of the things all of our offices try to do is to to really be there for students to to walk as some people said to really walk them through from that first foot on campus all the way through the whole four years because our goal is to really um form a, a community um a support network and we all all of us are working to really help students reach their full um human promise and potential you know um, we want to see students uh, develop um, intellectually um, and um, we're going to support students through that i think and that's the goal all of us want but i think that um, sometimes students feel like they're the only one well i everyone looks so happy and i'm the only one you know feeling alone or i'm the only one you know maybe having a little trouble in this class you know and the the college level courses are often very different than high school courses and being away from home for many people for the first time having to manage your own time you know not having someone sort of tell you when to get up when to you know be in school so it's a it's a big transition but all of our offices i think are there to to support students through it and just as a follow-up, Akua, can you talk about maybe some of the tutoring options or studying management tips? What's available for students to receive that help? Sure. The one office that we have, the Connors Family Learning Center, they offer um, tutoring in across all subjects and disciplines. They offer writing, help with writing as well. Um, they also have academic coaches that can help students with time management. Uh, Rosanna talked about the applications of learning theory course. That's another opportunity to help students with that sort of time management study skills. Um, so uh, yes, we often tell students it's better to seek some of those resources even before you feel as if you need them. Um, you do need them, you're already sort of tied in. But yes, the Connors Family Learning Center um, and the Learning to Learn class, the applications to learning theory, I think are just two of many ways in which to get that kind of support. I'm so glad you said that. And it's okay to ask for help. So at any point, if you need any assistance, please ask for help. You can also go see your professors during office hours. Professors have hours that they will post on the syllabus that you're gonna get, their contact information. And it's okay to reach out and to ask, especially if you feel like you don't understand the subject matter, or you just want to learn a little bit more about their trajectory in life and, and how they got where they're at. You know, we can all use a little bit of that support and inspiration along the way. 
I'll also just add, I see other hands just very quickly. Uh, all students as well will be, will be assigned an academic advisor. Mm -hmm. And so that's another place to really seek that sort of help and support through academic advising. And every student will have an assigned academic advisor. Wonderful, thank you. Yvonne, I see your, your virtual hand. Yes, thank you, Cindy. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of things because the program in itself, so we focus on the spiritual, intellectual, and social being of all the students that are identified as Montserrat students. And there's the students, let me start off by sharing that they're identified through the um, financial aid office. So they're highlighted and then they're given to us to then reach out to all of our students. And one of the things when you, sh you alluded to earlier is the fact that students come into a PWI or a large university and want to feel belonged. And one of the ways that we try to support our students is by giving each student a goal pass. So what that is, is a, fr a ticket, a free ticket, or that year years ago, a couple of years ago, we used to do it on the, the um, ID cards, but now we're giving physical tickets out. So that way all the students can enjoy all of the football games, basketball games, hockey games on campus. That is one way to build community. And a lot of students, you know, come on campus and say, I can't afford to have that, get the, that goal pass. Well, our program working with um, the athletics department allows each student to do so. Um, it, academically, we fund for service retreats. So a lot of students, and Andy had talked about the, serve, the Jamaica Magis trip. A lot of the students won't be able to afford the deposit. So we, again, work very closely with that office to make sure that the deposits are paid. And we have some work study positions. So I work along with a lot of um, campus uh, partners to make sure that all of these students that are, of course, that are challenged by high financial need are looking for jobs because one, they've got to support themselves. A lot of them had to have jobs before they get to, got to school to, to take care of their families. So we, I work with my partners on campus to make sure that they're giving jobs as well. And in terms of personally, um, emergencies. So if a student you know, happens to be on campus and something happens to a family member or they need to go home, again, my office is there to provide tickets or whatever transportation they need to be with their loved ones. So those are just some of the things that you know, my office and my staff does to make sure that these students feel a part of the campus and belong. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. And I just want to say, you know, my first week of working at BC, I went, I visited Yvonne over at the Montserrat Coalition program and she was like, here's some snacks, here's some toiletries. And I was like, I wish I had you when I was going to college, you know, because this, these are the kind of things that you don't think about. Well, but right. when you're thinking about your financial aid package and we're more than happy to support you in that way. And then there are a couple of additional expenses that will come up and we don't want you to feel left out. Like Yvonne said, you're gonna have passes to go to the football games and all the other sporting events. You have financial assistance to be able to go to the retreats and um, you know participate and be part of the of the campus community because you are and you deserve to to be part of all of those experiences. And the little things like buying toys or getting things for your dorm or books, all of that, you know, all of that adds up. And just having the support of the monster at home, like you said earlier, um, and everyone on here to support you along the way. That's something that's gonna definitely impact your college experience in a positive way. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Raphael, let's talk a little bit more about, you know, how through your role, um, you're able to support this, and especially thinking about the who are interested in the STEM related fields. You know, and you talked a little bit like about the Gateway Scholars Program. Why, why does that matter? Why, how does it create a sense of belonging for these students who are trying to make a career out of the, the, the math, all the related field? Right. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Um, and, and, and so why does it matter? Why does Gateway matter? Um, because, you know, success, I've never seen anyone be successful in my whole life, in my career, or any, you know, never seen anyone be successful by themselves. So it's through community. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think the strongest thing that you can do to be successful is to build that community as quick as possible and as soon as possible to not go it alone. Um, and, and sometimes it's difficult because as, as a high school student, you might have, you know, maybe your parents had parents Sorry about that. Raphael, it seems like we lost you there for a second. 
and see if we can get him back. All right, so it seems like we, we lost Rafael uh, Luna there for a moment, but we'll have him back in a second, I'm sure. But in the meantime, um, Andy, if you can probably just address this question in terms of um, your office, the BAIC, and, and how you're creating community for the student care. Sure, so um, I mentioned a couple of the other programs um, earlier, which uh, by default in some sense kind of create a community. Um, I think when, um, so some of the things that um, Akua alluded to, um, um, not feeling like you belong there, imposter syndrome, uh, in addition to being a predominantly white institution, um, you do have um, a large demographic of students that are, are, are well off. And so economically, sometimes that's different. And so students feeling uh, a type of way about those experiences. And so really, um, to what Raphael said, um, we do try to bring students together. Um, there are programs that bounce off of each other. So we actually have um, the sisters, uh, Sister Thea's Closet as well, where students can get um, uh, toiletries, uh, basic needs, things like that, um, snacks, snack foods. Um, we, uh, we loan laptops out um, in terms of books. So we do have a, a book award, the Karen Campbell Book Award, um, and things like that. And certainly if there's, um, um, kind of a need out of that out of that scope we can work with students individually to see what's the best way to try to support them and make sure that they're um, that they're good um, some other programs as it to kind of uh, race and culture and feeling like you belong so we have the dialogues on race program so that's facilitated by students and that all talks about student experiences so again going back to um, you know you're not the only one going to these types of situation and these are some strategies to overcome them um, the ride retreat where first specifically for first year students to talk about racial identity we have the ahana student uh, ahana summit that's a retreat for all class years to go and reflect on their experience at bc and and, uh, and make meaning and strategies um and then again the space in our office and so for students to be able to come relax kind of to just be themselves if if you will to just all right let me exhale for a little bit um and then we also can help students with summer courses so if for whatever reason um, you, you needed to take an extra class or isolate a class or something like that, we can work with students one-on-one -on -one to see if we can help provide for that course um, in the summer that would hopefully help students stay on track and be on course towards graduation. Excellent. I was just listening to a panel yesterday with our current BC students and they were talking a little bit about the spaces on campus and the BAIC and Montserrat were mentioned. Um, so shout out to you all, obviously. If you're missing the student perspective tonight, please know that there are a lot of videos that have been recorded for it for this month of April and you can find them all on your admitted student list and I highly highly encourage you to listen to some of those videos from the students who talk about their experiences at BC interacting with all of these offices, um, especially the videos that are for the AHANA students, and AHANA is an acronym, an acronym that we use at BC um, to empower our students who are um, of African descent, African American, Native American, um, Hispanic, or Latinx, um, and Asian. And so we, we have that, all those videos available on your admitted student library. Thank you. And Rosanna, I see, I see your hand. do this <laughs> yes um, I wanted to also add to the conversation in terms of um, another program that we host is the McNair exploratory program and that program works with first-year students and it matches them with a the faculty member in their field of study so the students are making um, are building a relationship with an academic mentor um, sometimes students are able to work with mentors on a research project or just learn more about the particular field that they might be pursuing as a student. So that's another way where, um, as Raphael mentioned, that students can make connections um, early on. And again, it, it's very organic. Um, you know, students meet maybe monthly with their faculty member and our office also hosts a few workshops, um, including um, academic advising workshops, in workshops where um, upperclassmen are imparting their wisdom to uh, first year students. In addition um, to that, our office also offers through our federal grant 
um, a one-time um, opportunity for students who qualify, um, mostly a high needs student, uh, to receive up to about $1,000 during the semester. And that's to help with, you know, again, with books and other, you know, additional costs that might have not been, you know, accounted for um, um, while you're at BC. So those are, again, opportunities that our office has. And again, each of our offices has a bit of everything to offer the students. And again, we try to work really closely in certain moments in particular to ensure that all students are receiving the um, support that they need. Mm -hmm. And, and also, Rosanna, could you talk a little bit about financial literacy? I know that your office also helps students when it comes to filling out these, these papers down the road, the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Yes, we are working closely with um, student services to um, promote financial literacy and ensure that students are really taken into account how to manage their money, how to manage credit. Um, and that's a program that we're really going to be bumping up um, this particular year and during the summer, um, if you're a participant of the CTP program, you would be able to access that information and really work with us to ensure that, um, you know, you're learning how to manage your money, make, make, making a budget and, you know, making sure that the expenses that you are taking on, you know, that nice sweater that you saw at the mall the other day, <laughs> you know, that you're accounted for the fact that maybe you're going out to dinner, you know, with your friends and do you have enough to do both? So we are going to try to make it very informative, very fun. Um, but again, it's all to the welfare and the future of the benefit of the student. Yes, and these are all tools that you're going to have in your toolbox, not only at BC, but even after you graduate from BC for life. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. I want to go back to you, Rafa, a second. I want you to answer a couple of questions that are coming. coming. I do want to give you the time to talk about the Gateway Scholars. Um, but I do see, Yvonne, that you had your, your hand raised. And there's actually a question here for you, Yvonne, about if you can just, I know you, you've already talked about this, but how do students know if they've been identified as Montserrat students? When do they start hearing from you and from your office about your services? Thank you, Cindy. So we will hear in June, early June. So the financial aid advisors will send us a list. Last year, we received 434 new Montserrat students. This year, because of everything happening, I'm, we're hoping to get it in the middle of the June. So once we get that list, I divide, we divide the list um, between myself, my assistant director, and a couple of students, and we make phone calls to every last one of the students, um, outreach to, and letting them know that they are a part of Montserrat. We share the resources that we have. Unfortunately, this year, I can't give away the care packs that we usually prepare for them. However, we're gonna send a lovely video to them. I may sing, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but you know, stay tuned for the next episode. Um, so we're going to share that, you know, share the, more information with them. And again, that's only done through financial aid. So the students are broken down high, 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 medium, high, low, and determining on their EFCs, that's how they're just, uh, identified as Montserrat students. So no one, usually we get to questions like, can I sign up? Because once the students get on campus and they hear about all the great things that we're doing, and again, with my colleagues that are with me as well, they want to sign up. Unfortunately, it's not something that they can sign up to. They have to be identified by the financial aid office. However, if they do come to us and they let us know that their situation has changed since they got on Bo at Boston College or come to Boston College, we can work with financial advisor to see what we can do to help and assist them. We never turn anyone away. So even though they're not identified as a Montserrat uh, Coalition student, we make sure we work with the advisors to see if or not we can add them to our list. And if they don't end up getting on our list, we still assist because it's important that everyone knows that they're going to be served at Boston College. Wonderful. Thank you so much for, for mentioning all of that. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Rafael, you're back and we're so excited that you're here so you can talk a little bit more about the Gateway Scholars Program. And, and then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that are coming through as well that are specific for, um, for your background. Okay, so maybe you can tell us to start telling us a little bit more about the support that's available through Gateway Scholars uh, for our first generation students in the STEM field. Yes, and you know, and I, and I would like to uh, dovetail on 
uh, that class called Application of Lear the Learning Theory. Um, you know, when you come, we want you to be part of a community. Um, and for student formation, you know, you, you, know you, you, know, you learn in the classroom, you have your community, and then also you work with faculty and administrators to really develop and to become who you really want to, your dream of becoming. And so we just had a panel this past week with a, uh, organized by students, Ahana students, um, and with the pre-health program, and they were, they were also gateway students as well. And they brought on uh, four uh, African-American uh, black men doctors. And so they talked about their, they were alumni and they talked about their experiences. And they graduated 2012, 13, 14, 15. And do you know what class they mentioned? Application of the learning theory really impacted them. So please, and, th and these are biology majors, biochemistry majors, and these black men, one of them is at Northwestern uh, uh, Medical School, the other is at Mount Sinai, the other is at Columbia. And, um, uh, and, and so the, these men really credited um, the application of learning theory. And why is that important? It's important because when they said they, they used to study so much alone and that school, they did really well in school. And some of them were top of their class, number one of their class from an inner city school in Washington, D.C. But he said he needed to learn how to learn because, um, and that was really key because the work in the STEM field is going to be different. So if you have a dream of major in biology, biochemistry, we can help you. But but also that class of application learning theory can help do some diagnostics and see what works best for you. One student said that um, he learned that he was a video, I mean a, a visual learner. And so this student, this uh, this doctor who's an MD PhD at Emory, he says he doesn't read as many medical textbooks. He just uh, learns through YouTube videos, which, you know, I've been hearing that a lot from our underrepresented students that some of them have been using YouTube videos into their success. And so I'm not saying only to use YouTube videos, but also to follow the work and read and do the work. But, you know, there are other things that you can do to accentuate your strengths and learning. And so if you uh, apply to the Gateway program, we hope you would apply. If you declare yourself biology or chemistry or biochemistry, we would love to have you apply. But then we also, you'll take a chemistry placement test, a math placement, just, it's not like a, to ex accept you, but to see what classes best fit you, that which chemistry should you take first, which calculus you should you take first. And based off your background and meeting with a summer advisor, we work with you. So there's no one size fits all. And uh, we heard from four black men on this week on that panel that were BC alum, and they all did it four different ways. You know, one was in psychology BS, one's biochemistry BS, the others were biology with more clinical, and they all did it differently. So if you come here, we want you to be your authentic self, like Yvonne said, and say, tell us, share, what is your authentic dream? And then we would help you, you know, get there by providing the resources, offices, we often uh, work with the BIC, Andy and Rosanna, you know, LTL and Aku and Yvonne. We all work together, so um, so it's a team approach. So we work in community, but also we want you to consider, you know, uh, what what works best for you and for you to learn. Uh, maybe you didn't learn what's the best way for you to learn in high school, but hopefully in college you will. And so you can take chemistry classes um, and biology classes, but we want to make sure they're the right ones that fit your speed and then you go at your own pace. And the four uh, black men, uh, BC alumni, that credit application of learning theory, they said, go at your own pace. There's no rush. There's no rush to do chemistry, biology, physics, and math that first semester. You know, you can take your time. And so, but if you want to go fast, you can. And if you're equipped and you're prepared, you can. We're not going to slow you down. But we want to make sure that you're going at a pace that works best for you. Great. So we're getting a lot of questions here. Um, and one of them, Rafael, if you can just talk a little bit about how students can become part of the Gateway Scholars Program. When does the application go live? Um, I, I think um, uh, we're, we're now that we're having summer uh, the virtual sessions through orientation, the application should be out, I think, in May 7th, I believe. Akua may uh, uh, nod your head. Yes, if that's correct. But it's the, it's the second week in May. It's about the second week in May. Um, and, in, and the deadline would be the end of May, like I think, I believe, May 27th. And so, and you will hear back from us by yeah. June, the first week in June, you'll hear back from us. And if by chance uh, we send a certain um, number of students an invitation to Gateway, if by chance you don't get an invitation, 
just please reach out to Rafael Luna and we will make sure you, you get an invitation. Great. And we'll share all of your contact information at the end of this webinar and also through the admitted student portal so you can so that all the students tuning in can can uh, reach out. There's another question here about medical school from a student who's interested in the biochemistry major. Um, and is it possible to have opportunities for medical hospital experience? Is it hard to maintain a certain GPA to be able to do this? And I know obviously we're in the city of Boston, so we have Boston as our backyard for so many of these um, clinical experiences, but maybe you can talk a little bit more in terms of the Gateway Scholars Program and, and the opportunities they have to start gaining some of that some of that hands-on experience. Right, absolutely. There's uh, opportunity. We just create, uh, worked out a, a, an agreement between Children's Hospital and, and um, the, the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences to start our first script turn program for underrepresented students and low-income students to do their work study at Children's Hospital. So it's a competitive process, so you have to do you know, well your first semester. But if you take the right classes, and you do the right speed, then you can quite, do quite well your first semester, first year. But um, the uh, and, and that would allow you to start doing internships uh, as a medical scribe at Boston Children's Hospital in the, in the gastroenterology um, division. And they want to expand this program. And it was halted uh, during the spring because this is the first year for it, but it was halted due to the uh, the COVID nineteen. But once this passes, we plan to continue that next year. So. There are opportunities like that in um, specifically for low income and uh, 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 students of color uh, for that program. But then also we have collaborations with dermatology clinics. Um, there's at the Brigham and I, and I spent 11 years at Harvard Medical School before coming to um, Boston College. So, so we have, have tons of contacts with research. So if you really wanna do research and you, see, you love biochemistry, that's the language I speak and I love. So we can definitely find you a biochemistry lab for you to work either on campus, but I, I do think it's good to start on campus when possible. But then uh, if you want more clinically relevant to, to switch over to the, to the hospital. But Boston College has in, in great biochemistry professors that really care and they're part of the gateway program. And so, um, you know, we always encourage you to start and to grow uh, and to grow into your, to those great strong positions at, you know, those Harvard affiliated hospitals in, in the Boston area. But there are tons of hospitals and they're, they're always looking for uh, st uh, wonderful students. And there is no necessarily GPA requirement, but we want you to do the best that you can do. Absolutely. And in terms of research, students will be entering a tier one institution. Lots of opportunity to get involved in research and research at BC is interdisciplinary. So whether you are in the field of STEM, the sciences, or if you're studying the humanities, you know, we're here to help you along the way. So can anyone maybe talk a little bit about the research that um, students can get involved in, or maybe some examples of the research that you've seen our current BC students or alumni get involved in? I see, Andy, you have your hand raised. Sure, thank you, Cindy. Um, so we have a few different programs. In terms of research, ours is specifically, um, you mentioned the humanities, so it's more on kind of the interaction of people. And so to expand a little bit, so for example, if you were ever curious, oh, I wonder why this particular group of people tend to go to college more than this group of people, or I wonder why this particular demographic in the, our society tend to get this disease more than others or impact more, or I wonder why these people tend to live in these parts of town versus these parts of town. How come, you know, why is BC a predominantly white institution versus this town? Um, why did my high school have resources and this high school didn't, you know, and how does that impact our outcomes? So it's more community-based, working with people in terms of their experiences, ultimately to uh, impact and, uh, and change public policy. And so students learn how to develop a research question. It's a year-long program, it's seven credits. Students learn how to develop a research, uh, research question. Uh, we help them develop different themes. Um, in the past, we used to have it based on different tracks. So for example, students that were interested in the, uh, in the Latinx track, the African, African diaspora track, the Asian American track, or the, or the Native American track. Definitely now we're seeing more crossover, more intersectionality. So I think it's more or less, which community can you work with? Um, students uh, identify and work with a faculty advisor. They also work with a community organization. And ultimately they present their research. Um, for the past couple of years, we've had students selected to present at Harvard uh, University during the spring 
where they bring um, students who are doing this type of research at all the different universities around the country to this uh, two-day conference to kind of present. So, um, so our office is uh, mostly focused on that type of research through the community research program, which has a lot of social justice type of themes and tenets. Excellent. And I know, Rosanna, you wanted to add on to that? Yes. Through um, the Learn to Learn office, we host a program called the McNair Scholars Program for short. It's actually named after uh, Ronald D. McNair, the, one of the African-American astronauts um, that was in the Challenger. Um, and the goal of that program is actually, it's a graduate preparation program. Um, our goal is to help undergraduate students prepare and be informed about the process of not only graduate school, but also how to um, do the application process in addition to doing research. We've run an eight week summer research program. Um, students are matched with the faculty um, in their field of study. So it's a very interdisciplinary program. Um, students also do STEM research as well as sociological research. Um, and they work throughout the year to, again, do the, um, do the research, do the literature reviews. And during the eight weeks, they're actually collecting data. They're, they're participating in workshops designed to prepare them for the graduate application process. They're visiting um, graduate programs. Um, McNair is a national program, and they also host a number of conferences throughout the country. And students get to not only participate, they get to present their work and make connections and learn about, again, the intricacies and the differences between, you know, a graduate program at Stanford versus one over in, you know, here in Boston. So um, it's a very small program. The students get to know very intimately, not only the staff, but also, again, get a very individualized attention around the goal of um, pursuing a graduate degree. Excellent, excellent examples. Yvonne? Hi, I'm just gonna share a little bit about our Frontier Fellowship. So we were given a grant by a very generous donor from the alumni. And um, this grant is used for the students to do an independent, an independent research. For example, we had two that I'll highlight. One student traveled to Africa to compare the United States and African um, health and the disparity between the two. Um, and that was a great research that she did. So they have to have a faculty advisor that's gonna sign off with them and make sure that they are held accountable. So we give them the funds so they will let us know what it's gonna cost if whatever travel, what if they need something you know, for food, whatever it is, they give us an itemized um, itinerary and then we, go according to that and we have a committee that decides how much the student gets the last one about three years ago we had a student that loved music and his research was all about music and he played for the pops on the heights and he did he talked all about the music and he was highlighted the pops on the heights and now he's off in california he's with a band and he's traveling all over the world so these are um researches that you know if it's not too intense for other programs in terms of you know the criteria but it's something that they're passionate about and we allow them to be free and be authentic and give us something that you know out of the box if you will and so far has been very successful in terms of the researches you know that these students are coming up with the topics and it's amazing that these students come up with so we'll support it once they give us a good topic and have, and I would love to travel with some of them sometimes. I mean, I'm trying to get that into the contract that I'm allowed to travel with them when they're going, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> dream big, Del, dream big. And for the students too, because yes. you can see abroad, you can do research, you can do exactly. overseas. It's very popular for students to go abroad, actually around 50% of students go abroad from DC during the academic year, during the summer. So we're here to support you and, and we want you to see the world and, and be global minded. Um, we have a question coming through about involvement on campus. And so maybe we can talk about some of the multicultural groups on campus and other opportunities for students to get involved. Who would like to start? I would give, start with Andy. Okay, go ahead, Andy. <laughs> How do you guess, Akua? <laughs> okay, right, right on Kishi Psychic. Um, so a number of different ways. So I think one is um, in terms of leadership, the, uh, the uh, Bowman Advocate for Inclusive Culture is program. And so that's more leadership development. And again, those students go out and facilitate different discussions and meet other students 
and coordinate the conference. Um, definitely, I think through the, um, I, I think some of the, uh, one question I saw in terms of uh, jobs, so we do hire students from time to time, and so we'll usually post the ambassador positions for students to, um, to, uh, to get involved. The Ethnic Heritage Months, and so we work with different student groups, so students, one, we work with the culture clubs, but then also students form committees. So for example, we'll have the Black History Month Committee, the Hispanic Heritage Month Committee, um, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month Committee, and Native American Heritage Month Committee, and they work with someone within our office to put on usually the opening event, if not um, a couple different events uh, for those different programs. Um, I know going into this academic year, we are looking for more ways to kind of connect students, so you'll probably see more intentional things through our Taste of BIC events. Um, we've do, done an opening barbecue for students during the first week of classes. Um, uh, and again, the, the Ahana tailgates. And so, and then in addition to that, then there are things that, that, that you would join like for the Ahana Summit retreat to meet other students, the ride retreat, and then the, uh, the other service trips like Jamaica Magis and the civil rights as well. So, um, and like I said, I think a lot of it is also organic. So I think a lot of it is just coming into the space, connecting with advisors, being introduced to different people, learning about different opportunities and um, keeping your ear to the ground. So I think in general, it's just about being aware of different things, looking at the newsletter or following us on Instagram. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else would like to add to that? Okay. So, Andy, you started talking a little bit about opportunities for students to get involved in your office, uh, whether it is through work study or empl student employment or mentorships. Do other offices have the opportunities for students to come in and get involved in such ways? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, so oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me. Go. Oh, go. sorry. Andy, you can add on if you want, and then we can move on to Rosana. Oh, no, no, I'm good. Rosana. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Yes, so we do hire students to be um, assistant administrators and help out in the front office, as well as we hire students to be teaching assistants. And those students would have taken the applications of a learning theory course um, and gone through that process and, you know, again, apply the skills necessary and received an A in the course in order to apply to become a teaching assistant for the course. Um, because one of the specific unique things about the course is that it's um, there's a, an application um, of those skills um, and you work one-on-one -on -one with a, a peer advisor per se to go through those, that process. So those are the opportunities that we have. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. And Yvonne? The opportunity that I want to share is we also hire students. We make sure that students um, get jobs through our, again, partners across campus. But I would like to highlight the Monster at Dinner Club. So that's for our sophomores. And it's a mentoring program that our for sophomores, we meet once a month. And that's in the faculty dining room where we have dinner, we break bread together and have dinner. And this is a time for the, the students to just share their challenges because again, with Monster S students and high financial need, you know, there's a lot of barriers that they face. So we give them an opportunity to come together. We eat, we share laughter with each other at times that there's tears in the room and just giving them a space to be comfortable to share that and let them and also reiterate that they're not alone. So we have about, there was about 60 students last year, this past semester. And we're looking forward to our upcoming year for, to recruit um, sophomores. And again, it's a, you know, when the students are at Boston College, it's important for them to have a mentor. And I'm sure we'll all talk about that later and how, it, again, we've been reiterating the importance of community. And this is one way that we are building community at Boston College, and that's through these mentoring programs. And this is all free food, right? All free food. Okay. I'm, I'm glad that I'm, you know, on lockdown because I'm working out to take off all the weight that I put on through the year. So this COVID-19 is working for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> Whenever you hear free food, students, you'll be there. Exactly. You'll be there. Okay. Akuba, you wanted to add on to that? Yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, BC, I think we have over 250 different student organizations. So not only are those... Um, cultural clubs, but we have organizations, I think, for just about anything you could think of. 
And um, if there's, if you, uh, one of the things I love also about our campus is that if you want to start a club, then it's very easy to sort of start your own club. Students come to us starting different, you know, the pre-health club for students of color, the first gen club, you know, all of these uh, clubs that students want to start and have started under a lot of our, our, our guidance. So um, we have this big student activities fair day in September, and that's a great day. It's usually a bright sunny day in September, and all the clubs are out trying to recruit students. So there's um, a ton of student organizations and many ways in which to get involved on campus. Excellent. And we do want your leadership and your initiative on campus so that you can come and start clubs and, and just really ignite uh, our campus community with who you are and your authentic selves. And I know that we're coming to a close here. So I just want to ask the panelists for a few words of maybe encouragement or advice as you're thinking about our admitted students to the class of 2024 um, and, and, you know, how what they're going through right now, but also the things that they have forward to look forward to, um, especially all of us being here to support them along the way. So maybe if we can just take a moment here to reflect and just come up with a few words to share with, with our admitted students. And whoever's ready can just raise a hand and I'll call on you. Akua, you seem ready. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm ready, but <laughs> no, I just want to say, you know, this is a really difficult time for all of us. There's so much uncertainty ahead, um, but we are all um, ready to get back to campus and, and start the semester. And we're looking forward to welcoming our returning students and our new students. And so we know this is a difficult and anxious time, but as you said, Cindy, there's so much um, to look forward to, and um, we're just looking, really looking forward to starting the semester, and we really hope um, to welcome you um, to BC in the fall. So congratulations on being admitted. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, privilege, I think, and it shows how hard you have worked um, up until now, and so we're really looking forward to seeing you at BC in the fall, and, and thanks for given us the opportunity to, to have this uh, conversation. Absolutely, thank you so much for being here, Akua. Rafael? You can, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and um, also like just to uh, uh, dovetail on what um, Akua said, we do realize that this is also probably a stressful time for you, um, your senior year, uh, you may not have had everything that you wanted at the end of the year, and so, um, yeah, and so I, I know it, it may be difficult, but there is a hope for the future. And, you know, I, um, and we really believe if you have a hope to be a STEM scientist or a theologist or English major or, you know, whatever major you want to do here at BC, um, there are people here to help you. And so, but, but it's so key that you just got to remember to bring your authentic self and who you are. And, you don't have to change who you are, but we, what we want to do is help you grow into to somebody that you really want to become. And so um, just being authentic and just having a hope for the future, come with all your hopes, come with your hopes, your hopes on your parents, bring it all, you know, and then we'll, we'll just work with you as a community and with your friends to encourage you and to be a cheerleader for you to just to make it to that uh, finish line to graduation and to on whatever else you want to do. And we hope that you consider BC, but wherever you are, the fact that you are accepted to BC, you'll be successful wherever you go and wherever you decide. Thank you so much, Rafael. Rosana? Yes, um, I uh, agree 100% with Rafael. Um, and I wanna say, I'm actually a 1991 graduate at Boston College and I am a first gen low income student as well, um, coming from Dominican Republic. Um, and growing up in uh, north of in a city north of Boston, which is low income and middle to low income, so I understand, um, you know, what it is to come from a space where it's diverse and you, you know, and while Boston College was nearby, I, you know, it, it's it's a different world, 
But in that different world, you're going to be challenged to be the person that you're supposed to be. And like Raphael and all of us have been saying to you, we are here to walk this path with you and help you through this. The other um, last semester, I had the honor of hosting um, alumni, first generation alumni that are that look like us as well. Um, there was a person, a VP of um, pharmaceutical sales. There was a VP who, who, she was a lawyer. She's a lawyer by training and is a VP at a big, um, a big company uh, named Vertex. Um, we had a woman who's working for um, former President Obama through his My Brother's Keepers initiative. Um, we had people in finance. So you can come from whatever means that you, you're, you're in at this point, but the future is yours and it's bright. And I'm st I strongly believe that we can all, you know, you are all able to achieve your dreams. And again, we are here to help you along the way. So welcome to BC. Thank you, Rosanna. And I'm so glad you mentioned the alumni network as well. And just like Rosanna said, so many alumni who have come to BC and, and, and continue to give back. And many of them also identified with being first generation or maybe coming from low income backgrounds. So you're here, you've been admitted, you know, we can help you along the way. Andy. Sure. So I would just like to kind of co-sign and piggyback on what all of the panelists had said. Um, uh, specifically around these times, it's very challenging, particularly for all of you trying to make a, a very impactful decision um, and, and getting a lot of this virtually. Um, and, and I think, you know, for many of you, depending on where you go, I'm sure it will be the right decision. I think everybody's different, you know, experiences, different places fit people. Um, I know, though, from what I know about BC and having worked here for almost 16 years, and I think maybe that's coming out through this webinar is that it is a community of caring. And so while we're showing different offices that work with students individually, I mean, there's so many other resources and people that we could have shown where students identify as, as places of support. And so it truly is a place that really, really cares for students. And so I'll, I'll just kind of throw that out there as well as for you personally to have an open mind. And so while we're talking about different majors, different opportunities, different, different things you can get involved with, um, just as you're coming into BC or wherever you decide to go, just have an open mind. You know, if someone mentions an event, try to check that out. Be open to other um, other majors, other things that you could do because, um, uh, and, and I think this kind of goes to being um, your true authentic self. So I think growing up, you know, and again, growing up from uh, um, the inner city, Dorchester and Boston and things. So, you know, we might have ideas of what we want to do and achieve and what people tell us, but then you get to college and you realize, oh wow, there's so many more things that I can actually do or become that maybe is more, part of my authentic self. So, so that would be the, uh, the last thing that I would add. Thank you so much. And finally, Yvonne, last but not least. Okay, let's put the icing on the cake here. So I have to say, when you look at the word right now in this unprecedented time of uncertainty, we're all anxious, okay? And as I was sitting here reflecting, I said the I, when you look at the word anxious, there's I in the middle and at the end there's us. Now we're all dealing with something, but when I think about you as students and I think about the panelists that are here tonight, I have to say this is a community because the I became we and the we became us. And that's going to be you. And we're looking forward to meeting you and hopefully, you know, again, it's not easy. I mean, I know a lot of you are deciding what should I do? You're still trying to take your exams, you know, all right to the class of this year coming in. You've got to hold on and hang in there. Better days are coming. I migrated from London, England, you know, and it wasn't easy for me. But my determination was to get my education because I had family support and I had people around me that says, you can do this. And now you've gotten to the end of the road. And I was telling my daughter today, who's also in college, that you have the pen to your story. You have the book, the next chapter. What do you want to see in that chapter? You know, this is it's for the page. I'm now getting ready to transition into college. What do I want? And like Andy said, this is a decision that you're going to make for the next four years. Where do you see yourself? Yes, we're dealing with the COVID-19 and everything else, but beyond that, better days are coming. Where do you see yourself and where do you want to get that education? My advice to you today or tonight is be your true self. You're going to get through this. We're all rooting for you. And I want you to end strong from high school 
because when you're in strong, then you know that you're going to definitely do well. And I love you guys. And thank you all for, I don't know you, but I still love you. And I was, you know, born and raised in London, England. So I'm going to give you a little bit because everybody's saying that's a problem. She's from London and she doesn't sound like it. Well, I drink my tea. I'm going to have a cup of tea at nine o'clock tonight. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. So for me, there's a lot of diversity at Boston College. And when you come to BC, you're going to realize that you feel so at home because there's so many people that are willing and ready to work with you. And congratulations to you. Have a good night. I just want to I just want to say I feel empowered, uplifted. I hope you do too. Um, and this is the kind of community that you're a part of. So I just want to thank all of the panelists on here. We talked a lot about authenticity today and you really brought your authentic selves to this conversation. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank all of the students, families, parents, guardians who are watching who have been following us through all of our virtual events all month long, uh, we're here for you. You know, May 1st is still the deposit deadline for enrolling at BC for being part of the class of 2024. So please, if you still need to complete your financial aid packages, please reach out to your financial aid officers. Please reach out to the admissions office. We'll also post the information, uh, contact information for everyone on here, all the panelists. And make sure that you're gathering all the information that you need to feel empowered with your decision. And for those of you who have already made your decision to be part of BC, we cannot wait to, to meet you um, and, and to interact with you in the next few months ahead. Uh, we want to wish you all of the best. Have a great weekend. And please continue to monitor your admitted student portal. Watch all the videos that you can. Um, and don't forget to reach out. All right. Thank you, everyone, on this panel for, for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good weekend. And be safe, everyone. Yeah, stay healthy and safe. Wash your hands and wear your masks. <laughs> Bye, everyone. All right. Bye.